Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I got a fun one. I'm finally doing something for myself. Uh, I drive this older 2000, I guess it's 2013 Toyota Tundra that I take off-road a lot and it's it's seen a beating. I've gone off-road enough to knock the speakers loose and break them from their magnets a couple times and I've repaired those. And just the other day I was noticing I did an iPhone update and I thought they must be planned obsolescence because I got in the truck that day and the speakers just sounded like, like hell and I thought there was something wrong with the Bluetooth. Bluetooth until I realized, no, it's just another speaker issue. So uh, rather than continue to try to fix these older, I guess they're Infinity reference speakers, I'm gonna do a complete overhaul. So stay tuned and I'll show you what I got that's going in. So here is my belated Christmas right here. Um, I feel like a kid again. I'll start with the back. We have a thousand watt RMS amp, all the special cables. We're gonna do the top uh, Exelon reference deck for the best sound quality. I bought a backup HD Kenwood camera and a generic one for the front. We can compare those later. And it all revolves around these. A uh, really good friend of mine gave these to me. These are the probably circa 1997, 98 um, Orion NT series competition speakers. I believe they retailed for about 3000 a pair back then. And he was having grounding issues with them. So he gave them to me. And uh, I have discovered that we have some grounding issues. Not on this one, actually. Let's see. You can see right there. They didn't put a grommet on the on the metal there. So <laughs> look at this one's almost like completely chewed through entirely. So uh, I'm going to get into rewiring these, putting solder on there, and somehow figuring out how to prevent that from happening. And then hopefully these bad boys play nice and loud and proud. And... We'll get this bad boy set up. Stay tuned. I'm going to go through every step, step by step. You'll see what my old stereo sounds like, and we'll compare it in the end. Hopefully, it comes through uh, on audio on the computer. Um, it's going to be fun. Okay, the first thing I need to do is figure out how to pull these out so I can get to the wires in the back. And I took this, who makes this tool? I can't think of it, but it's a spanner wrench, and it has these 90 degree tips on there, which comes in handy. I'm just going to go in there and kind of squeeze that. And hope that holds on and there we go look at that just kind of wiggle it out i think i got it there it is um and then i guess next step will be figure out how to get this off and resolder that that's what we're going after right there all right i think what i'm going to do because this this rubber actually seems like it's kind of brittle we're going to replace it with new cable i have some oxygen free copper cabling here and I'm going to mark the negative with just a black mark on the negative side on all these and pull all the cables to start fresh. And I think the solution, this is a higher gauge. It has already has thicker insulation. I'm going to run one through each side where the spanner wrench goes. Um, I'll just figure something else for the spanner wrench and that'll give me a little more flexibility here to insulate the inside and the outside with I'm going to use some heat shrink tubing, which gives you a little bit of thickness, a little bit more durable finish than this flexible rubber, and follow that up with some epoxy. Okay, plan B. I'm not going to route the wires through those holes because that's actually to hold this speaker housing, or I guess the speaker, to the housing with, with hardware, which is what we want so it doesn't vibrate apart. I really don't like this tiny little hole. There's not even room to make a fake grommet with epoxy. So I'm going to drill a hole there with the step bit and that'll be big enough to get the new cabling in and also make a little extra oversized to fill it with some epoxy putty to work as sort of a, a you know, a grommet. I could go buy some, but I've got epoxy putty here, so that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, so I'm gonna put a small hole all the way out here, give it some distance and another one right over here. This is just a spring-loaded pinch so that it finds the hole. The bit doesn't wander as much, just gonna sit right in there. Yep. So we got a nasty burr on the back. I'm just gonna use this to cut that thing off. better so there's already a inner sleeve there so i cut that that long give it a little bit of extra protection because i only need to solder that amount in 
And I'm gonna run my heat shrink tube up to there. We just wanna to try to protect that wire as much as we can. I couldn't find my lighter, so <laughs> I don't really have a lighter, I don't think. Um, just gonna use matches to shrink this stuff. Oh, the smell of plastic. That's gotta be good for you. Now, if you're not ghetto like me, you might have a heat gun, much cleaner way. Much cleaner way to do that. So that just fits in there just barely. Now I'm gonna get that and probably put some vice grips on there and hold that down while I solder that into place. Okay, just real gently, just gonna warm that copper up. Let's see if that's gonna get it. I never profess to have the best soldering skills, but they don't need to be the best. Ooh. Just need to work. Okay, get the other side connected there. I'll go do it on the other side a little bit more too. Ooh. Stay put, got a little too warm there. And what I really don't want to do is connect the two sides. That would not be good. Okay, this is gonna tell us if we're connected and I wanna find out, did I mess up and connect both sides? Let's see. Oh, thank God. It looks a lot sloppier than, than it is, that'll work. Okay, screwing this guy in. There's insulators in between so that this metal is not touching that. And then this should just Go in there and twist in. Easier said than done. <laughs> Just like so. For now, that's I'm I'm good with that. We'll get it tighter in a little bit. Okay, after about an hour of fiddling around trying to get this sucker to seat in there, I realized that the th the thicker wires didn't permit enough space, so I smushed everything down with vice grips and now it's locked in place. Whee! That's a wrap for today. I gotta say, maybe these sound good, but they sure didn't think through to the design of how to house these tweeters. Um, I perfected on it, hopefully. That's what I'd like to think. Time will tell. Replacing used speakers with used speakers. Maybe not the smartest idea, but hope it sounds good. All right, next step, I've got these old clipped cables on here. I'm gonna melt the solder off of there and suck it off or do whatever I have to do to clean those up and then get some new cabling soldered on. And then I'm gonna test them over here. I've got a like a 100 watt RMS. Not, a, not as much power as my other one, but it's enough power to drive these. Um, and I'm just gonna run through the crossover, make sure the speakers sound good. I'll test all the speakers and I'll probably test all the crossovers because I don't want to get to put him in the car and then have to take everything out. I want to know right now if I need to buy a new set of speakers. Pretty impressed with how they sound uh, just on first try. No no scratchiness. They sound amazing even out without being enclosed. And I'm um, pretty excited to try the other ones out. I hope they all work. And check that out. When do you ever see that on speakers anymore? Made in the USA. 1999, baby. Okay, you have these hooked up. I got... My other ends are ready to go for the crossover. I'm gonna go ahead and solder these. I like a nice solid connection and it's just a lot easier to do it on the bench than in the car. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, got all the connections soldered in and now I'm gonna get these adapted to these six by nine plates. Funny story, my friend that gave me these was like, hey, do you want my old Orions? I go, what size are they? He's like five and a quarters and six and a half. I go, oh, too bad, I, I need six by nines. <laughs> I almost 
didn't accept this offer of awesomeness, um, a little search on Amazon and you can buy an adapter plate for about 10 bucks. And that's your brand right there, Scotia or whatever. And you can actually cut these, I think, to fit the six and a halfs. But I'm gonna just put the five and a quarters in the front and the six and a halfs will fit in the rear without any modification, I'm imagining. So we'll see how this goes. Well, I take it back. Look how flexible these are. <laughs> They're super soft. If you were just putting in some cheap speakers, probably not a big deal, but these things weigh quite a bit. Look at the size of the magnet on the back of that. No loss though, $10. I'm gonna use this as a template because it is about the right size. And I'm gonna make some out of MDF, sturdier. And then I can put the holes wherever I need to fit them in the door that way too. All right, I took my biggest hole saw, got it pretty close to that. That inner line's what I'm going for. See if that fits. If it doesn't, I'll use a drum sander on um, on my drill, hand drill, and I'll just sand it out till it's the right side. Fits perfectly. Now I'm just gonna get these holes in place. And actually, I think I will use this. Then I'll have like, I'll glue this to these. Then I'll have a laminate. It'll be even stronger than if I just do a single piece of, this is actually HDF, it's higher density than MDF. But nonetheless, if I double that up, it's gonna be pretty strong and durable. This, this, this is flexible and this is brittle, but this is stiff and this is not stiff. So I should have best of both worlds that way. Okay, I'm gonna let those set on the radiator overnight on low. So it cures up. This is a Sika construction adhesive. If you ever need a really good durable bond, this is the best I've found. That's gonna be permanent. All right, this glue has a five to eight day full cure, but it's gonna hold up just well enough to continue working at this point, sitting on that heater all night. I'm gonna use the self-piloting drill bit to find my holes here, and then I'm, gonna, then I'm gonna make those holes oblong so it fits a variety of sizes in the truck, flip it around, put my speakers in, and then pilot these holes. Then we'll get onto the truck and start uh, installing the speaker. All right, fortunately, the Tundra doors come off easy. I popped this panel with this plastic uh, pry, pry bar. I've got a metal one too for the body clips. And then a, you basically just unscrew this Phillips. There's a Phillips in there. You pop these body clips, you pop this panel, and then you pop the bottom and then lift up and it comes off. And then you just disconnect the wires and the door latch mechanism. All right, so these are the cables. You just move these cables forward and up like that. Make sure you know the orientation. Green on the bottom, white on top, and then in here, and that's gonna require a little bit of extra work. These are not fun to get out, but you need to push in on a tab and then pry it at the same time. All right, well, one of the downsides of older vehicles, the plastic gets brittle. I went ahead and broke that. <laughs> and this piece here. So I'm gonna use my soldering iron with a flat tip on there and I'm gonna get it nice and hot. I'm gonna melt that plastic on both ends and weld it together on both of these. Then I'm gonna reinforce that with epoxy. Okay, I got that welded. I test fit the connector in there and it goes in. It's not perfect looking. Um, it doesn't even look even, but it actually works. Uh, I'm gonna take this fix-it stick. It's a two-part epoxy. It's like a clay texture. I'm gonna break a marble sized piece off of there, massage it till it's one medium gray color, and then I'm gonna wrap it around the outside of this, making sure not to get in the way of where we need to uh, push that piece out. Um, I'll put a little bit of around the base of that clip. All right, it's not pretty, but that'll do the job. <laughs> Detour accomplished. Back to... So a good location for the crossover is right in, in here, and I'm not gonna put it on the, the door panel, but where that lines up is right there. So that's gonna get screwed in there, and I'll run my wires out of the bottom here to the woofer and then I'll install I'll probably install my tweeter onto the door panel just because it'll have less material to get that high frequency through and it'll sound better that way. All right way. so I got the old speaker popped out of the frame here and I have now a double-sided tape. This is all scrap. I had it the the body of this old one got in the way of the frame so it, it had a gap and I filled that with caulk the last time I did this. This time it the new mount fits flush, so I'm just filling that with some double-sided tape. Um, it's gonna help seal off that enclosure and prevent rattles because we don't want plastic on plastic 
and uh, yeah, it should just help with longer term, good quality sound. Okay, real happy with that. I used some pretty beefy screws um, along with that stiff HDF material sandwiched with the plastic. These are really rigid and uh, should hold up for a very long time. Oh, and there's a missing screw. Good thing I saw that. Okay, I found the diagram on tundras.com. Just wanted to make sure I got the polarity right. Connected my wires with butt connectors and covered them in heat shrink. Should help keep some moisture out of there. And also did the double-sided tape on the opening there. Gonna go ahead and get that screwed in and we'll get the crossover. Installed. Okay, so I'm gonna run my tweeter right here, just to the left of the speaker. I want it on the outside. It's just gonna help the sound quality. The back of this is two and a quarter inches. So I have this, I don't know, this is an HVAC tool. Essentially, it's made for cutting into sheet metal, but it'll work fine on plastic. You're basically gonna roto zip a hole, whatever size you set it to. And I tested this on a piece of HDF and made sure it was a really snug fit. Because what my goal here is to do is to just make it a friction fit so it holds tight on its own and then seal it with some glue, probably some Gorilla Glue, so it doesn't move. And it, it should probably be able to set fine while it's drying while I drive around the rest okay, of the day. Okay, got that cut and I used my drum sander on my drill to just bore it out just enough to make it nice and snug. Then rotated the speaker to point basically on an angle towards the driver. And there's just enough room for that uh, woofer to fit in there without any sort of clearance issues on the back there. Door popped on just right. Everything fits. I test played uh, some songs. I can't play out loud because I don't want to get copyrighted. <laughs> Infringement. You know how it goes. <laughs> Gonna pop the rest of those on, do the rest of the doors, then we'll get to the amp and the stereo. Snowy start to the day, got my little buddy heater going. Got the front other side in yesterday. I'm gonna pull off these panels for the rear, starting with this, using the, the pry tool so we don't break anything. I already pulled all those out. You can see everything's in place. And then got a screw here, a screw there, a clip here, and then the rest of it just pulls off. Just like the front, we're gonna Disconnect these two items and the control to the window. Well, these are the factory rears. Um, a little easier to install, it looks like. I'll just use that fitted cone. Interesting how I'm gonna screw the other one into that. Might need to make another template. We'll see. And it uh, looks like I need to put the dampening material all over this door. I haven't done that yet. Um, and it's cold day, so I'm gonna use the uh, hair dryer, combination of the hair dryer and this buddy heater to heat up that metal so that that stuff will stick. Because if it's not warm enough, it just has no adhesion. Well, it's pretty clear I'm gonna have to do some uh, templating because if I hold this speaker up against there, you can see those holes are not gonna match up with anything on the car. So, um, I'm gonna cut this speaker so that I can get a flat scribe off of this template here. And then I'll use this, because I know where those holes go and where the outline of that sits, to make a template out of wood, because I can't just take this off of there. It's all one piece. So I'm just gonna cut that, maybe with the bandsaw. Look at that weak little magnet. Man, this is gonna sound so much better. And uh, then screw this into the wood, screw the wood into the truck.
Okay, got that cut off. So now I can get this flat against the board, trace that out, and then I'll trace this onto the inside, find out what the diameter of the back of that is there. And I'll cut that first and then cut the outside with the bandsaw. We should have a fit. Yeah, I use the template from basically the grill cover, which has the perfect hole in the back for the inside. Gonna get those cut out and then I'll deal with marking the holes and drilling those for the door. So these, I don't have the right size hole for that. It's not an even number that you'd have on a hole saw. So I'm gonna use my jigsaw this time. And uh, after I do the jigsaw, then we'll get onto the bandsaw for the outside. Houston, we have a problem. I was just thinking about how deep these speakers are compared to the other ones and how those other ones had that sort of offset depth on the mount. And so I went in and I measured and I only have two and a half inches of clearance in there. So <sighs> that's okay. I'll just start over. You guys got the idea of how to make these templates. I'm going to start over with three quarter inch and that's going to push the material forward. I'll push the speaker forward and then I'll have clearance for that window. That's why they pay the installers, you know? Let's go see if this fits and we'll make another one. Perfect fit. Doesn't need to be all smooth on the edges. This will okay, work. I got these drilled out for the corners. And just like the last one, I'm going to put double-sided foam tape in there to seal off the speaker there. And then I'll put it on the back before I install it. All right, I just got all the uh, sound dampening tape on. This is a 25-foot roll, by the way, of 6-inch wide. And I use a whole roll on each door just for quantities. I do d two layers, so it's two layers thick. One layer is helpful, two layers will make it about as thick as Dynamat. Um, and then I have this ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put some double-sided foam tape on there and then get the speaker in. Okay, got the crossover installed. There's just enough space there. I tested the door fit. It has a nice little opening right above the speaker. And I'm gonna get that tweeter situated right in there. It'll be a nice tight fit. Hopefully it all fits in nice and easy. Uh, I like to keep the tweeters next to the woofers. It gives it a uh, more natural sound. And also, I put the bigger ones in the back. I'm not sure if you noticed. Uh, I'd like to have a rear sound stage that's got a little more bass than the front. Uh, gives that low frequency a little more room to develop before it gets to the front seat. I think it's. Well, that wraps up the first part of this process, which was retrofitting and repairing and installing old competition speakers. And uh, hope that helped a little bit. If you guys want to watch the next section, we're going to get onto the amplifier inst installation. So this is for a second gen Tundra or Sequoia, um, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. So watch the next video and subscribe to stay tuned for more. We're also going to get into the head unit and the cameras and try this whole thing together. Thanks for watching.